Best Bros Outdoors. Now, I know this is not our usual videos. I'm actually going to be giving you tips for actual fishing videos and how to do those. Not necessarily for editing, although this will apply for other said things. Disclaimer, this is for specifically fishing videos, so, or outdoors in general. So we're going to split this video up into three separate groups or three different seconds three separate sections sorry english so the first section is going to be what do you need like camera wise mic wise part two or the second part of this video what does it all mean such as like frame rate and resolution everything that i could physically think of that i could teach you guys i'm about to give you a very cliche answer and that is well whatever you have whether that's your phone or maybe you want to buy a gopro that's what uh so we started on and we still use gopros for all of our videos up until now um if you guys really do like this video this is on a camera called the canon m50 so i hope you guys do like it it does not really matter which gear you have if you have a phone that will work pr plenty good i know this is the samsung galaxy s21 plus it shoots like 4k 60 frames per second believe me i get it upgrading is so nice we're always looking for gear to improve the videos for instance in this video we used a different camera now to show you just what cheap does the lens i'm shooting this on is around 70 bucks so it's not exactly an expensive lens but what do you guys think feel free to comment down below all you seriously need to start is your phone keyword start now at the moment what we use is the gopro hero 8 which is this one right here super nice it uh, is very impressive shoots 4k 60 frames per second the batteries last for about an hour we use battery packs uh they're just super nice actually this is the exact rig we use so we have a battery pack on the end handle here comment down below if you want a full video on this camera otherwise this is the canon m50 if you're impressed with it this is a definitely another option we decided to upgrade with it i can't really say a whole lot because i just bought it so i can't really say a whole lot but i hope to have a review coming at some point when i get a little more experience with it the lens that you guys are currently seeing is a brand is by a brand called newer and it's 25 millimeter i know that may not mean anything to you but it's a 25 millimeter 1.8 large aperture wide angle lens with manual focus feel free to comment any questions i do not answer down below and i will try to my full extent to answer those to recap start off with a phone second option gopro third option would to be get something like a dslr or a big camera if you have a larger budget At second section of this video is going to be what does everything mean like frame rate and resolution well to break down frame rate if you take a bunch of photos and then you all lay them together basically that's what a video is with audio backing it like let's say 60 frames per second you are seeing 60 individual photos per second 60 frames per second is slow enough that you can actually use it for like b-roll and smoothing things out if you have a little bit shakier of hands slow-mo let's say you're releasing a fish or casting a lure or anything that you would want to slow down <laughs> the most relative version to what our eyes see the most natural thing you can do is 24 frames per second now i know there is also the option for 30 frames per second 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second are kind of debated between like what's better but just to give you my opinion on this 30 frames per second looks a little bit more like a home video and it's basically like soap operas and news stations use so that pretty much explains my opinion on it whereas 24 frames per second is about as close as you can get to what your eyes see the motion blurs nice and smooth and you can kind of just have a nice looking video motion blur is basically this so if you can see kind of see how my hands blurred as it goes up and down blurred the frames per second is slow enough that it actually can't catch every frame the higher the number of frames the bit slower you can make that in post so whereas if you shoot in like 24 versus like 120 24 frames per second is always going to look really jumpy because it only has 24 pictures to jump to so it's going to look very jumpy like you're staring at pictures whereas if you shoot at 120 frames per second there's enough information there that it can make a much smoother sequence when you slow it down which one you want to shoot in depends on the situation so we're going to move on to resolution now resolution is kind of like the big number everybody always hears such as like hd which is 720p 
or 1080, which, can we just talk about real quick, why do they call HD 720p and then full HD 1080p, like, I think we're a little past 720p, if you guys know photos, like the individual pixels, uh, the easiest way I can explain this is kind of look like LEDs, so like 720p has 720 individual LEDs, the higher the number in resolution, basically the clearer it is usually, most commonly used 720p is like on the bottom of what's most commonly used, and like 4k is about the top of what's used, so now you would think, well clearer video, that's what I want, right? You should not only base off of what you want your video to look like, then you should also go off of like how much of your computer can handle. You don't want to be shooting 8K if you have a 2008 MacBook. I don't know. If your computer can't handle it, maybe shoot in a lower resolution. 1080 is a good all around. In fact, this is shot in 1080, so you be the judge of it. Then you go on to like 4K, which is going to be a clearer image all around because well, there's just more information. I mean, there's so much information behind it. There's going to be gigabytes, whereas 1080p is more like megabytes or maybe a gigabyte. 4K is also going to be a powerhouse on your system, so you better make sure that your system can handle it, especially when you, like, stack one clip on top of each other. Oh, my word. Like, it's insane because you're taking 4K on top of 4K, and if you guys don't know, in editing software, if you lay one clip on top of each other, it basically, when they come together, your computer has to process 8K. Now, once you go into your camera, if you open the camera up, you're going to see another thing called ISO. Think of it as digital light. That's how I've always had it explained to me, is like digital light. So it's introducing fake light, upping it a lot. Like this shot isn't normally this bright, but then what it's doing is when you up your ISO, it kind of takes everything and like, it's like turning up a light bulb. Basically, you're making it brighter. But be careful with ISO on a camera because when you do that, you can mess up your camera and everything. You'll get grainy and it, especially in like dark shadows and stuff just won't look as good. Try to keep that low. For instance, the settings I'm shooting on my Canon M50 are ISO at 160. So another term that is often used is shutter speed. Shutter speed is basically the amount of time that your sensor is receiving light. I'm shooting over 1 one fiftieth so that's like it's getting uh, exposed to light one fiftieth of a second or half a second just double your frame rate and use that as your shutter speed that's the base rule for it stick with that and you will be absolutely fine